Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the audit process for the payroll cycle. In this session, we will dive a little bit deeper into the internal control and substantive testing for the payroll cycle. In the prior session, so we know where we stand, we looked at the payroll cycle. We learned about the various accounts, the various groups or people involved, and we talked about the HR, we talked about payroll slash accounting, and we talked about the treasurer. In this session, we'll dive a little bit deeper, giving the information that we have learned in the prior session. So how does the auditor actually go about checking the payroll cycle? Well, the first thing we have to do, just like in any cycle, understand the internal control. In the prior session, we looked at an overall picture. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper, assess internal control. And we will see that payroll would always assess it as low. And we will, we will explain why decide whether to test the control or not. Remember, if we are going to rely on the internal control, we test the internal control. Otherwise, we will not. Now, if we're dealing with a publicly traded company, PCAOB, then we have to test internal control. Then we will design test of control and substantive testing. And this is what we will discuss in this session. Look, looking at what type of control, how do we test the control and what type of substantive testing and we perform the substantive testing we go ahead and we perform the substantive testing we'll talk about that so this is what we'll discuss in, in this session this is an important session learning the ins and outs of the payroll cycle let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So internal control is always a key is in any cycle. But in the payroll cycle, we have to understand we assess it as low for payroll. Why? There are several reasons why. The first reason is pretty straightforward, and I touched upon it in the prior session. Employees will complain if they are underpaid, and that's not, never a good thing. So you have the employees always checking their net pay, so on and so forth. Also, if you're the owner of the company and you're noticing you're paying too much, you are going to say something. Reason number two, transaction for payroll are usually the same. What does that mean? If you have a payroll expense of 15,000 every month, that's an easy number to spot. So if you're auditing the company and you know for a fact, based on everything that you learned about the company, about their payroll, it should be $15,000 a month. You would look at their GL. It's it's it's, it's like a picture, 15,000, 15,000, 15,000, 12 times, if that's the case. But it's always you can spot error easily if you see something unusual. Because the transactions, there are not a lot of them. Twice per month. That's it, maybe three times per month, depending whether it's semi-monthly or bi-weekly. Nevertheless, it's under control. Num and reason number three is payroll, you always have to file federal and state form. So as a company, if you are handling your own payroll, you want to make sure your payroll is accurate. Nobody wants any trouble with the IRS or the state or the local government. So that's why you always have the company itself. Also, the other thing about payroll, remember, you could outsource that. And we'll talk about outsourcing when we discuss SOC 1 and SOC 2. But but the point is, internal control for payroll is usually good. Why? Because there's a checks and balances inside the system. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into those control. They're well structured. We talked about this. We explain why management wants, wants to pay correctly. The employees are there. Nobody wants to get into a, a, a trouble with the government. So what type of internal control, key internal control for payroll? One is adequate separation of duties. And we talked about this in the prior session when I showed you the HR, the payroll, and the treasurer. Those three, HR, payroll, and treasurer. And we talked about the role of each one of them in the prior session. Now, why do we, why do we separate them? The main reason with payroll is having ghost employees. Ghost employees means employees that don't exist, but we add them to the payroll to pay them. 
there, there are friends, there are spouses, uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever, whoever they are. We add them. Well, if we have separation of duties, the only people who can add are payroll, but they cannot determine the pay. They can review the pay. Uh, the payroll determine how much we're going to pay them and the treasurer cut the check. So you want to have those three separated. You don't want to have the same person adding someone, determining their pay, determining their time card and cutting the check. Also, we want to cut the proper check as well. So proper authorization is important. So the first thing we'll start with is the HR. Authorize adding or deleting employees. The only group that can add or delete employees are HR. And we have to have supervisors approve employee time card. So before an employee is paid, well, somebody from accounting or management or payroll, we have we have to see the supervisors of that individual improving approving the time card. Therefore, if we have a ghost employee, now we have a signature from someone who's approving time cards that don't exist. So we kind of make sure someone is responsible. Obviously, the person that's adding the ghost employee, if they're the supervisor, they are going to sign the card, but hopefully they cannot add that employee. That's, the, that's where you stop it from the beginning. But also you want approval to make sure that individual is, is being paid the proper amount. And this is going to play into valuation. The dollar amount is correct. Other key internal control for payroll is adequate documents and records. And that's, that's a key control in all cycles. Time cards, for example, are needed and they have to be approved. And time cards are better if they are pre-printed with the employee name, ID, the jobs that they work on. So this way we can pay them hourly or by piece rate employee. Piece rate employee means they pay by their output, whatever they are doing, by item. All documents should be pre-numbered and sequentially used so we can keep track of it and account for its completeness. Physical and logical control over payment. We should not let any individual have access to blank payroll checks, obviously. Also, logical access, limit access to banking system for direct deposit. So not anyone can add wire instruction and be able to wire money from the payroll account to someone. So we would limit the payroll checks, physical, maybe put them someplace where employees cannot access them, only the people, the treasurer can access them, but also IT control. So not anyone can access our banking system, specifically the payroll account, and send money from it. And obviously, a good key, key internal control for all cycles is independent checks on performance, management review payroll for obvious errors and reasonableness. You want someone from management, we said it's the controller usually, that would review the payroll for any errors, reasonableness, so on and so forth. Now we're going to look at transaction related objective four for payroll. There are specific audit objective related to payroll transaction. What we will do in this session, we would look at the objective, look at its internal control, how should we test the control, how should we perform substantive testing. So it's going to be all in one. So we're going to look at occurrence, completeness, valuation, allocation, and accuracy. It should be valuation, allocation, and accuracy. Let's make them all capital. So we're going to go over each one of them separately, explaining starting with Occurrence. Occurrence means what? It means the recorded payroll payment are for actually work done. So when we are paying their employees, we have the actual employee. It's not only we have the actual employee and the employee actually did their work. They have a job seat, job sheet signed by a supervisor, approved by a supervisor. So what type of internal control we should have? I just I just told you time cards are approved. You don't pay someone unless a supervisor approved it. Time clocks are used to record time. We keep track of that individual time. Adequate HR files are maintained. We don't, we don't just add anyone. We just add legitimate employees. Employment is authorized. Someone authorized to hire that individual. Segregation of duties. We talked about this. HR, timekeeping, payroll, and treasurer. Those should be separate. Only existing employees are in the computer files. Anybody that's not there is deleted. And when we disperse the checks, those are authorized before issued. So when the before the treasurer send the checks out, they are they are authorized. They review everything and everything is authorized. Now, how do we test the control? Well, we examine time cards for approval. So the control is what? Time cards are approved, right? That's that's a good internal control. How do we test this internal control? Look at the time card. Are they approved? So now we are testing what we said we are doing as good internal control.
review HR file for completeness. We said we only we hire uh, segregation of duties, HR keep track, only existing employees are in the computer files. Well, if they are existing employees, what should they have? They should have application, background checks, references, so on and so forth. Review the HR file for to see if we have a complete profile for that individual. Here we are testing what the company is claiming. Review the organizational chart for segregation of duties. We said we have HR separate from timekeeping, separate from payroll, payroll separate from treasurer. Well, let's look at the chart. Does it say that? Examine printout of rejected transaction due to non-existing employee numbers. When the computer print a rejection transaction, you know, this employee does not exist or this employee ID number is 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 not relevant for us. It doesn't look legitimate. It, it doesn't process. Well, let's do we review those. Examine pay, payroll record for approval. Remember, we disperse it for approval. Examine that. Is the, is, is the approval there before disbursement? Those are the tests of control. Then for occurrence, we have to perform some substantive testing. And they're all interrelated. Well, what do we have to do? Review payroll journal, general ledger, and payroll earning record for large or unusual amount. Now, we're going to dive in and start to look at these numbers and compute them and make sure they are legitimate. Compare canceled checks or direct deposit to HR record. Select several checks and or you know or drag deposit and see if those if that money went to a person that's on the record compare cancel checks with payroll journal name amount date it's the amount is correct the date the disbursement of correct the name of that individual is correct that's what you do for substantive tax testing examine cancel checks for proper endorsement if we send the checks to john doe john doe is actually endorsing the check and cash in the check. We don't see like, for example, John Doe, then the supervisor's name, right? We wanna see the cancel checks, the proper endorsement. So that's for occurrence. Let's take a look at this multiple choice from farhatlectures.com. Which of the following is not an internal control over processing of payroll? So three is proper internal control. One is not the proper internal control. Okay, let's see. The person responsible for dispersing paychecks is not involved in timekeeping function. Yes, this is segregation of duties. This is proper internal control. You don't want the people that's giving the check also involved in timekeeping. Why? Because they can manufacture the timekeeping and for someone and keep the check. Say they dispersed it. So you have a timekeeping and someone is giving the check to a ghost employee, right? So A is a good internal control. Hiring employees are independent from payroll function. Yes, HR and payroll should be separated. Hopefully this is an easy elimination. We're down to 50-50. Using a signature machine to sign checks, the number of hours worked by each employee is authorized by the employee supervisor. I would say I will keep D. The number of hours worked by each employee is authorized by employee supervisor keep it means it's it makes sense keep it means it's not good it means that's a proper internal control we're looking at when which one is not a good internal control so i'd say using signature machine to sign checks that's a bad thing why because you want at the end before that money is sent out someone is checking everything the controller checking everything we have time card it's approved proper pay if you want to check if that employee exists, so on and so forth, then you sign it. But don't let a machine do that. Therefore, that's not a proper internal control. The answer is C. What should you do? Well, what should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com. Whether you are a CPA candidate, accounting student, invest in yourself. That's the best investment you can make. Good luck and stay safe.